Hey guys, so you know times are tough if the junior cheeseburger whose entire livelihood is due to donations is complaining about Wizards of the Coast. Now, I think he's very jealous because a lot of his friends got invited to the NPL special invite where there is 68, um, actually 67 because one person had visa issues in the minimal the minimal amount of money you can win, even if you finish zero with no wins, is $12,000, $14,000. And that's why Wedge is a little bit jealous. You'd be surprised how many complaints I've gotten from the MC invitational participants who had to deal with crazy bugs while playing that literally cost them games. It's almost as bad as you getting paid for making content without making the content. How's the summer autumn sheet auction coming along? Or the Ixidors being posted for donations? So like I mentioned, I made videos on these issues. It's kind of a non-issue to me because of course he was not going to send the Ixidors. Of course he was not going to send the Mythic Editions and so on. At some point in time, it would be foolish for me to believe otherwise. So when you do have someone who is um, his whole livelihood, he's never had a job before, um, and he just feeds off the pity of our MTG community, and that's what it is. I mean, it's not he doesn't have to work for many more years when he can raise $100,000 with a snap of a finger. That can last him on food stamps probably for three years, maybe four if he's very... If he's, you know, saving money. So the interesting part about uh, Wedge is he even Wedge feels this way about magic. So that should tell you that magic is not in a good state. The only people promoting it like crazy are Rudy. And that's because he is a store trying to sell you some stuff, right? But outside of Rudy, in terms of content creators, MTG Arena is very good. But I'm talking about the paper magic. You don't see many game stores promoting the product anymore. My local game stores all do not do magic, all three of them. that I, I mean, DNA Comics, when I first got to Houston, was 100, 150 people at pre-release, every pre-release. And now it's just they don't do magic. No F&M, no pre nothing. Uh, same with Weds. Um, Weds, I would say, is a casual player. It's hard to stand up for a company over and over again. And for many years, he just held his hands out and asked Wizard of the Coast for a handout. And now he is not liking the bad decisions because they're not helping him personally. Now, had he been invited to the NPL, I'm sure his tone would be significantly different than it currently is. It is amazing that regardless of, so the one factor that determines when, if you are leaving magic or being disillusioned with magic and not spending money in magic, um, I'm sure Wedge does not spend any money in magic. He doesn't have a local game store. And your connection to magic is how long of a magic player you have been. Now, obviously when you do something for a long time it's easy to become disillusioned and i think for me i feel the same way wides is feeling um, but even though our views are different um i mean it's very obvious what's going on here wizard of the coast has done a very poor job um, burnout is what i feel uh, there's just too much product too much to digest and too much to spend money on. I've always said you have a set limit of... So in terms of when you're a grown-up and you get a job, you have X amount of money that you can spend towards your hobby every month. Uh, this is true if you're single, you're married, it doesn't really matter. And that X amount could go to mobile games, it could go to video games, it could go to any amount of... Even MTG Arena would be a competitor or Hearthstone. But to paper magic, when you really consider what paper magic is, it's about community building. 
but everything Wizard of the Coast has done has been anti-community. Uh, from the MPL itself, uh, the MPL before the MPL, that money was spread out to many more pros. Now, thirty-two chosen ones get all the money, and people like Sam Black are left with no money. They're getting rid of PTQs. They get rid of the. Um, I don't think we have as many Magic Fests as we had Grand Prix and the prize pools are really bad now. Because the money had to come from somewhere. It wasn't like they snapped their finger and all of a sudden there was more money. No, they consolidated all the money that the grinders would be trying to compete for into a few tournaments and they called them the Mythic Invitationals. I think um, overall, uh, the most glaring lately is their eSport branding client management of Arena. It's atrocious. It's like they read a 101 guide on making eSport and just made things up as they go. Um, this is also the, and I also wanted to leave this here because uh, he has a very, very interesting taste, uh, take on finance as well, especially college finance. Kind of give you a um, idea of what he's struggling with on a basis. Probably lots of student loans because he does complain about it a lot. But his feeling is not unique. Um, I feel the same thing he feels. Um, maybe not for the same reasons, but you do become disillusioned. I remember a time where magic was a lot more fun. Um, you would have stores with, like I said, 100, 150 people at pre-release. And that's just the players, right? There's all other people who hang out and, you know, they don't play magic, but they enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, that will never happen again, at least in Houston. Uh, you're not going to get a pre-release at midnight on even like regular. I know they move back the time now because there's no reason. Uh, there's no reason for that to happen. And this seems like a push by Wizards of the Coast to get rid of the local game stores. I mean, if you get rid of all the local game stores, then players will have to buy direct because they won't have an option. I mean, it's either buy direct or buy from Walmart, but maybe Walmart wants out too. I know the relationships that they have with Walmart are not very good right now. I, I'm sure Walmart is wondering like what's happening with all these collector's editions they cannot sell. So to Walmart... Yeah, and magic cards have been, you know, they sell, they do great on mystery boxes and cubes and this stuff because the margins are high, but their margins are not actually that high for magic cards in general. So, yeah, it's crazy to me that I would actually agree with the mana source on this. I think a lot of these decisions have been the decision that where they reprinted everything and that will come back, back to bite them in the butt, uh, just like Chronicles did. You might be like, oh, it's not Chronicles. It's uh, In terms of volume, in terms of how many cards are printed, yeah, you're right. Chronicles was printed far less than the uh, new Mystery Booster Pack will be. We just live in a different era where instead of being creative and being rewarded for new... Like, we had all those master sets. Now we have mystery boosters. Now we have direct-to-order cards with cartoons on them. None of these cards are new. And next year we have commander cards. We're going back to Pharos, which is great. We have a Pioneer format, which is just Frontier reworked. I mean, I don't know. Like It just seems very... It seems very lazy. Um, I've said that many times. It just seems like they don't really care very much. They just want to make as much money as they can, but in the most lazy, non-sustainable way ever. There's no good design. The story is crap. Uh, I, I mean, I guess the story is like the best way to put it. They, they sell you a book for $20, a hardcover book for $20 that the writing is... Very poorly done, but it comes with a good picture. It's, you know, it looks like a great book. Like if you never knew, if you didn't read the book, you would be really impressed by it. And that's all their products. You know, I, I've always told you the front of the Alderaan collector's case, no matter how much Rudy loves that product, that cannot be a good product because it's standard cards. And we all know what standard does after rotation. 
Once Upon a Time is banned in modern now, Oko's next. I mean, by the time this you guys see this video, which is a week or two ago, Oko might be banned from Pioneer already. So, my general takeaway of this is tough times ahead for Magic the Gathering, and I'm not going to really invest in it or be part of that. Um, I have no interest in vintage. The only thing I'm picking up are collections, um, in particular EDH collections or entire modern decks. I don't think modern has much time to go either. I mean, they got rid of Legacy finally, um, and modern is a new Legacy, and Pioneer is a new modern. It's financially like it should be good for me because I out in terms of cards, I hold more pioneer cards than I do of modern and definitely of legacy or uh, definitely of vintage. But I am very concerned that um, these cards will be printed to the ground if they already haven't been. And I know why. It's because it's easy. You throw a cartoon on the card that you already know that people will buy. It's safe. It's safe because you know people will buy Blood Bitter Blossom for $30. No matter how loony the cartoon you put on it is because it's still Bitter Blossom. I'm still interested in buying collections, especially towards ED8s. But I have no interest in vintage. I have no interest in reserve list as much. Uh, I mean, reserve list like dual lands will always be good for your EDH decks. And I have the same burnout that the Mana Source has. And that's really weird because we're coming from two opposite places, but we reach the same destination. And the destination is I don't think Wizard of the Coast is making very good decisions on its products. I mean, their dragon, they're selling for like five bucks. Like, I played an opponent with it. It looks so ugly. And it's like that little dragon probably made m more money than the entire Eldoran collector's case because the margin of that is like 100%, right? There's no printing, no distribution. You just buy the little dragon that looks ugly and boom. How many little dragons can they sell, right? Online, they can sell a ton. So anyway, um, that's my kind of takeaway. I do agree with Wed's. And that's rare.